This is Nigel. He didn't always look like this. When I very first purchased him, he had a lot of things going on. He was having some trouble eating and had lost a lot of weight. In addition to that, he had a very heavy parasite burden. But little by little, he started looking so much better. And after several months, he was a completely different horse. He bosses the other big horses around pretty easily. I never really pondered over the idea whether he was a horse or an actual pony, but it is a question I have been getting a lot on my channel since I've been posting videos of him. Since he is here for the long haul, I decided to go to Texas A&M's website. They offer a DNA test and I thought it would be a good way to finally figure out what exactly Nigel's heritage is. While there are a lot of companies that will try and sell you a DNA test for your horses, Texas A&M has one of the best. I filled out the form, sent my payment in, and pulled a few hairs from Nigel to send down to Texas. When I bought Nigel at the auction, I was given no information about his sire or dam or what breed he was exactly. There are a few things about him that I have noticed over the years. He has an extremely thick coat in the winter time. When I first got him, I thought it may be a metabolic condition, but he is perfectly healthy. He also has a really unique coat pattern like an Appaloosa. He also has mottled skin around his muzzle, his eyes, and his underbelly. He has the cutest little prancing gait as well. Since Nigel is somewhere between 30 and 40 years old, he really doesn't have to do anything for the rest of his life, but it will be really interesting to see what his DNA reveals. This DNA test takes genetic material from the horse's hair. It is then broken down into its key components. After it's broken down into little chunks, it can be compared to over 50 breeds of horses. This is the list of horses that Texas A&M will check for. They break it down into the top three breeds your horse has the most in common with genetically. I thought Nigel's coat pattern would be a dead giveaway, but I don't see Appaloosa anywhere on this list. So my first guess is going to be the Welsh Pony. I also think that he is probably going to test closely related to one of the Spanish colonial breeds. It seems like every horse breed has a little bit of Arabian in them, so that is going to be my last guess. I am going to give you guys an extra bit of time to look over the list so you can guess which breeds you think Nigel has in his DNA. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you definitely know he has a very specific attitude. So keep that in mind when you're making your guesses. The ancestry report that I got back from Texas A&M has a genotype report as well as the three top breeds. All these little letters are the chunks that are compared to historical DNA data to figure that out. When I took a look at Nigel's report, I noticed a lot of my guesses were not in the top three. He didn't have any Arabian or Argentine Criollo nor did he have any Chilean Criollo. And my number one guess of Welsh Pony wasn't on there either. I am a little bit embarrassed because I have spent quite a lot of time with Nigel and I was really excited to see that his number one breed was the Galicino. The Galicino breed was started when there was a ship full of Galicino horses brought over from Spain to the New World. These hardy horses had to endure a long journey on a ship. Cortez brought these horses to Cuba and they finally made their way up into Mexico. These horses had to adjust to the harsh climate. It is no surprise that only the most fit horses survived. These horses made their way north through Mexico and then finally up into the United States. It wasn't until the 1950s that the Galicino Horse Breeders Association was created in Texas. It may seem ridiculous that this little spotted pony is a descendant of those great Spanish horses. But there is a little known fact about the Galicino that is interesting in Nigel's case. 
Galasinos were used to create the breed that many people know today as the Ponies of America. This is likely where Nigel gets his spotted coat from. It makes so much sense now looking at his mottled skin and his very vibrant coat pattern that he would be very closely related to these early Spanish horses. He also has the white sclera that is also a pretty heavy breed characteristic with the Ponies of America. And for a very small little horse, he is quite nimble. I am really interested to see what his number two horse was. And this next one makes a lot of sense as well. And it ended up being the Shetland Pony. Shetland ponies originated from the Shetland Isles in Scotland. The scarcity of food and harsh climate turned these ponies into super hardy animals. Some of the characteristics of the Shetland Pony include a small head, widely spaced eyes, and small alert ears. They also had a short muscular neck and a stocky body with short strong legs and a shorter than normal cannon bone. This stout sturdy pony was perfect for plowing the fields and carrying peat through the Scottish Isles. You might not think of the Shetland Pony as a particularly good workhorse, but that is what they were originally used for. Something very interesting about the Shetland Pony is they do possess a very thick double coat. I am pretty sure this is where Nigel gets his crazy hair from. The circumstances by which the Shetland Pony was moved around the world is a little bit of a sad story. When the Mines Act of 1842 passed, women and children under the age of 10 were forbidden from working in the mines. This created a real problem because of the Industrial Revolution, coal was needed more than ever before. It was the Shetland Pony that was called in to fill in for all of the humans that could no longer work deep down in the coal mines. These ponies were lowered into the mines where they could be underground for the entirety of their lives. In 1913, when the use of these pit ponies reached its peak, there were over 70,000 ponies working underground in Britain. These ponies were stabled in the mine to increase production. They typically worked eight hours a day and could haul out as many as 30 tons of coal. This was an extremely dangerous job, with most ponies only lasting around three and a half years in the mine. In the US, mules were the equine of choice for mining, but Shetlands did make it over to work in some of the mines in the Midwest. Iowa State University has a really interesting documentary on the last working mine where these ponies were used. I will link it in the description because it is extremely interesting. Another interesting thing about this coal mine in Iowa was that it was very close to where the Pony of America's breed was established. Given Nigel's very thick winter coat and his love of really nasty weather, it makes total sense that he is a descendant of the super tough Shetland ponies. The last horse that showed up on Nigel's DNA test was the Venezuelan Criollo. This is another one of the early Spanish colonial breeds. Like a lot of the other early Spanish colonial breeds, the Venezuelan Criollo was brought over by Spanish explorers. These explorers were often in charge in making settlements and importing a lot of Spanish bred horses was part of the job. When they were first imported, a lot of these Spanish horses had trouble coping with the tropical climate of Venezuela. And like most of the other Spanish breeds that were developed around this time, only the strong survived. As time went on, these horses traveled north, migrating through the Americas. As they crossed the Great Plains, they were mixed in with the local horse herds creating a mount that was hardy and tough and could keep up with the tasks of the day. 
One very interesting thing about the Venezuelan Criollo is the presence of a special gene. A significant amount of these horses do have the presence of the DMRT3 or gait gene. This is the gene that is thought to be responsible for the extra gait present in the Icelandic horses. I am so glad this little pony gets to spend the rest of his life with me and I can totally see all the different pieces of his DNA. From the resilience of the Galicino to the coat pattern of the Pony of Americas, the hardiness and grit of the Shetland ponies, and the toughness of the Venezuelan Criollo. It is really cool to think that there are tiny little pieces of all of these breeds bouncing around inside my tiny little spotted pony and they are likely the reason that he made it through his recovery so well. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.